Over the past five years, I have built 17 houses, half of which were constructed on a slope. Design indeed turned out to be the most significant challenge we faced when building the houses. In 10 minutes today, I will share with you all the challenges, all the ideas, and the solutions we found and implemented when building our houses on a slope. When starting to work on the design, you essentially need to focus on four main things. The first is, of course, the features and characteristics of the house, such as meaning what you can build on this plot. The second aspect is the technical specifications, how you will build it, what kind of foundation and what type of frame. The third aspect is functionality, meaning how you can most effectively integrate your house into your landscape. And the fourth aspect is aesthetic elements like view, cardinal directions, ease of movement, etc. When building on a slope, the design will differ significantly from what you would construct on a flat lot where you can simply place straightforward architecture or take a basic design and set it on the slope. This will be practically impossible to achieve. On a slope, there will always be a unique design. When you purchase a lot and start the design process, the first thing to pay attention to is whether there is sewage available. If there is no sewage, be prepared. You will have big problems such as potential health risks and environmental issues. Why am I so confident in saying this? look down from this balcony. You will now see a large number of various purple pipes that are strategically located in this carefully and meticulously prepared field. Right now, it looks like a nearly finished structure, and I understand that soon we will cover these purple pipes with soil and a beautiful green lawn will appear there. But when we bought this plot, that beautiful, serene and tranquil green lawn at the end in essence, determined what the house would be like. There are certain codes and regulations. Based on these codes and regulations, you can determine the size of the house and the number of rooms you can build, depending on the area of your lot and the slope you have. Because when constructing a septic system, the slope must be up to approximately 30%. And based on the size of the possible field that you can build on your lot, this can all help you determine the septic engineer and then the game begins. You make the field larger or smaller. You make the house bigger or smaller, more rooms or fewer. And this entire combination between architecture and the size of the septic field is of immense importance. Without this, you won't be able to build your dream home. In our case, our septic field is approximately 3,000 square feet. We have one acre of land, that is 43,000 square feet. We have a house of 5,000 square feet, which is both large and spacious and has four bedrooms. We simply couldn't build a fifth bedroom. Of course, we made another room, but it doesn't have a closet, so it doesn't count as a bedroom. This is a simple yet effective little trick that will help you add one room in your home. Just don't specify a closet there. We had to install three septic tanks and create an extensive field of approximately 3,000 square feet. The next extremely important element in creating the design is the HOA rules and regulations. If there is a homeowner association in your area, it is an organization that creates design rules, such as those that must be followed in that neighborhood. Pay attention to the roof. You can see here the sloped sides of the roof, the so-called pitched roof. This is a roof with a slope. In this area, it is not allowed to build flat roofs, so we had to create a house with a pitched roof. Pay attention to the HUA requirements that pertain to the facades. That is, the facades must be covered with part stack and part stone. This is all indicated in the HUA documents. What do I usually do before purchasing a lot? I am going to this area and observing, examining the roofs, the facades, and whether there are green caps. This tells me whether there is a septic system or not. Literally one visit to the area, and you can easily determine what design challenges you will face. The second technical factor in designing a house on a slope is the gradient, meaning how steep your slope is. This will determine the number of floors and the possibility of building additional levels. 
For example, we have a lower floor here and several rooms are located on the lower floor. Although it is customary for a house to have a first floor and a second floor with the rooms located upstairs. Here there is a sort of reverse slope and the rooms had to be located below on the Gi lower floor. This determined the slope of our plot and now the position of the house which also affects the technical specifications of the future house. For example, if your slope is positioned in such a way that the road is at the bottom of the house, your house will appear to be standing on a hill. Accordingly, all the water will flow onto the road and you will need to create a specific drainage system. The communication for bringing in materials will be quite challenging. You will need to bring them from the bottom up. In this project where we are located, the road is at the top. On one hand, it is quite easy because you need to carry materials down and you have a beautiful view. On the other hand, you need to consider the drainage system, which is also a technical element of the house. Otherwise, all the water from the road and from the slope next to the road will seep under your house. Accordingly, you need to plan the entire drainage system and direct the water away. I would like to remind you once again that just the type of plot on a slope fundamentally and essentially determines what technical specifications you need to meet. This is a drainage system. This is a retaining wall. These are supporting columns. If necessary to install for your house, these are numerous structural elements of the house that the slope on your site has already determined for you. By the way, we have already moved on to the finishing works. We are practically at the final stage. And if you are interested, we will do a complete overview of this house when we finish it. The third important element in the design of a house on a slope is its functionality, or in simpler terms, the layout, how the rooms are arranged in the house, where the windows are located in relation to the cardinal directions, and how a person moves. It's all about functionality. It's the way the design of the house is created will determine how a person will live in it, either enjoying it or facing difficulties. For example, let's talk about the cardinal directions. Usually, a large number of rooms with windows are oriented to the southeast to ensure there is plenty of light and warmth in the house. In cold states, where it often snows, this also has a certain functional aspect. For example, if your entrance to the house is located to the southeast, the snow that falls will simply melt in the morning sun and you won't need to shovel snow in front of your entrance. It's a simple thing that saves your strength and energy. Similarly, when in the morning the cold weather is indeed present, the sun rises and its light enters all your rooms. The southeast side works in your favor, providing additional warmth to the house. Garages and utility rooms are usually placed on the northwest sides to prevent the so-called cold sides of the world from creating an uncomfortable feeling in the house. We are currently in the guest room and on the other side of the corridor we have exactly the same office. This is done intentionally and at sunrise the sun enters through the windows, providing our guests or the person working in the office with a sufficiently bright room. Our sun moves in such a way that all our rooms, including the master bedroom and the main living space, are always bright. And lastly, there are the aesthetic moments. On a flat lot, you won't be creating a cascading landscape, building retaining walls or making waterfalls. Most likely, you will have a fairly simple straight landscape design. Here, it is quite natural to do this. You will create retaining walls, and different levels in your landscape design. An infinity pool is also frequently and commonly used on a slope where the water flows downwards, creating a stunningly beautiful effect as if you are almost looking at a veil of water that seamlessly merges with the sky. If your house is situated above the road, you can place the pool at the highest point. It all depends on what kind of slope you have. The slope always dictates your design, even from an aesthetic point of view. If you want to learn more about how to build houses on a slope or how to build houses in general, 
join our community of builders and our courses. The link is in the description.